Good morning everyone. So today we've come to a very busy area of Rio de Janeiro. It's the city center. You can probably hear all the noise behind us. That's the tram passing by right now. <laughs> so in Portuguese they call this area the centro. Centro means center. And this area is often overlooked by tourists because they're just coming to Rio for like the beaches and partying, right? But there are a lot of like historic attractions here, a lot of tourist attractions here. So now we're at the intersection of two of the main busy streets here. So you got Avenida Rio Branco here, and this is Avenida Presidente Vargas. Huge street, I think it's like, I don't know, 12 lanes or something. And yeah, this is just where all the big businesses are, all the office blocks. So right now is a working day, that's why it's so busy. And this is an area we know very well, right? Yeah, we, we used to work here for like, I don't know, how many years? Six years for me and how many years for you? Uh, four or five years since I was 18. And yeah, we, we used to work in a place over there, in a big building over there. Yeah, just right around this corner. Yeah, so that's where we met and that's where our story began. Yeah. So we're going to be doing a lot of walking today. There's attractions down there, attractions down there, and even behind us. So yeah, we've got a lot of stuff to check out. Yeah. Let's start here. So right next to where we started the video we have a really famous church here called Igreja da Candelaria and the building started in 1775 but then over two centuries they've added bits onto it I don't think we can enter there though it looks like it's boarded, boarded up but yeah we should be able to enter some other churches today so the part we're walking at now is pretty new it's kind of like a boardwalk along the Guanabara Bay so they built this during the Olympics. Rio got a big uh, like facelift during the Olympics, especially the center. So if you're somebody that visited Rio before the Olympics, it's gonna be very different now to, to when you visited. So this area here is actually a military Navy base. Is it, is it like a Navy school? Yeah, I think so. They're like Navy, uh, I don't know, buildings, but I don't know what, uh, what they're doing there. Or yeah. There is a museum. There's a sub submarine that you can visit. Yeah, you can kind of see the corner of the submarine there. And then there's some kind of like pirate ship looking thing here. Yeah, you can actually visit. Maybe we we will do it one day, I don't know. Yeah, we got other plans there's today. Also, yeah, there's also a helicopter that you can, you can visit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a few like military things to visit. These are the Navy guys here in white. Before we continue, I am going to talk about today's sponsor, Surfshark. We have been using the Surfshark VPN on all our devices while traveling the world this past year. Surfshark allows us to have a private connection wherever we travel, keeping our data and personal information safe from potential hackers. Surfshark gives you access to all Netflix libraries, different countries have access to different series and films, so by using Surfshark you can access them all, as you can set your device to any country in the world. Surfshark also allows you to avoid travel restrictions when visiting internet restricted countries. Using Surfshark you can access any website or app in any country. Besides these benefits, with just one single account, you can connect to unlimited devices, which means you can use it on all your family's devices. Click on the link in the video description, which has the discount code Jumping Places to get 83% off and three months for free, and that also includes a 30-day money-back guarantee. So we're now going to walk through the main historic center. So Rio was actually the capital of Brazil from 1763 until 1960 a lot of people still seem to think that it's the capital of brazil when we travel and we mention that we're from brazil yeah a lot of people say oh rio de janeiro the capital but it's not it's uh being a place called brasilia a place that i think they made to be, yeah, the, capital. to be the capital it was nothing before no they made it like in the center of brazil to be the capital <laughs> yeah to be in the center because yeah. rio is a bit like down south i guess yeah it is uh -huh. 
Yeah, so around here you have loads of the old buildings from that time. Even these here, look at all these. And this is at the exact spot where we would have our happy hour after work. Yeah, we, like there are many bars here. Now it's more empty because it's not uh, late or it's not the time to have happy hours, but there are many bars here and we used to come, especially to this one here. So this, this place is where me and Carol had our first date yeah. after work. Yeah. Yeah, we had a, a drink here. So I think, I think it was this restaurant, right? Yeah, this one. Yeah, this one. Yeah, so we were sat around here somewhere. But a really cool place for a happy hour because this gets really busy after work and yeah, just super lively music and you get all the beautiful buildings. This square here has quite a few sites to see, so this is called Praça Quinze, which means the 15th square. And right next to us is an old fountain. So this is an old water fountain from the early 1700s. It's a lot bigger than what I remember, so yeah, it's not active right now, and it's kind of closed off to protect it. But it's pretty cool that they, they kept it here. Got like modern buildings surrounding everywhere, and then just this in the middle and this statue here is of the king of Portugal called Dom João the sixth who was the first king of Portugal to arrive here so that statue is here because this is actually the point where the Portuguese family arrived when they were escaping Napoleon of France who was trying to capture them in Portugal they arrived here in 1808 so yeah, that's like a memorial of the king at the time. Yeah, so the Portuguese royal family would have arrived around here somewhere. I think this was like the the main port at the time. Still kind of used as a port. It's where they have where they have the ferry terminal here. And I think the ferries go to Niteroi, which Niteroi. is the city over there. Yeah, it is. And the but also the some side. islands. Yeah, uh, there's a, an island called Paqueta, which is an also, uh, also another place that we want to go. And other places, in, like less famous, we can also get the ferry from, from here. here. Yeah. And back there, there's like a really cool um, old looking palace. Do you know the name of that place? Yeah, it's called Ilha Fiscal. And that place was actually the last place where the royal family had a party before they got were, kicked out. Yeah, or overthrown. So yeah, that's a famous place you can actually visit and we also want to go there at uh, some point. Yeah, but I think the tour takes quite a while, like yeah. two hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe we'll still do that on this trip, but it looks amazing. So this building here in front of us is called the Paso Imperial, the Imperial Palace. So as you can see, it doesn't really look like a, a palace, a royal palace, and that is because it wasn't built to be a royal palace. It was built in 1754 just to be the house of the colonial governors that were here at the time. The royal family weren't even here then, but then when they escaped Napoleon in 1808, the king obviously had to live somewhere. So this was the building that the first king lived in. But then the second and third king, which were Pedro the first, Pedro the second, they lived yeah. at that other place. What? In Quinta da Boa Vista, there's like da Boa Vista. a big palace with a big uh, garden area. Looks like a royal palace. Yeah, that really looks like it. This one doesn't look... Uh, it's nice, but it doesn't look like a palace. Yeah, it just looks like a government kind of building. And do you know what that building is? That looks amazing. Uh, currently, it's the Assembleia Legislativa, which is the place where they make the laws and before i think it was also a government building but i'm not sure uh, what kind of uh, government building it was but now it's the assembly legislative yeah.
right next to the square we have this beautiful church here called Saint Joseph and this is the front of the Assemblea, that government building we was just talking about so yeah you can see it looks absolutely amazing here it doesn't even look Brazilian at all it looks like it's from Rome or something like Italy yeah because of the pillars I think it's like a, the same style yeah yeah the huge pillars and even the designs of the sculptures of the people yeah it just looks Italian or something to me Greek Italian so this big church that you can see behind me huge church is where my parents got married here in Brazil in like the 70s so yeah they got married in this church it's called the Igreja Nossa Senhora do Carmo kind of looks like it's two churches I don't know this part looks older and this part looks more modern but yeah it's kind of joined together get a better view of the busy street Avenida Rio Branco so here we have like the tram lines tram lines going that way as well yeah just super busy now it's lunchtime so yeah everybody is out and about and this tram line is quite new as well yeah well it's been like I don't know four years maybe but it, it was built also in the same time that we, they were building things for the Olympic Games. Olympics and also the World Cup I left Rio before the Olympics so yeah I didn't really get to see all this when I lived here so it's completely different this was all cars when when I was living here so this is one of the most famous attractions which is this coffee house here called Confeitaria Colombo and it's from 1894 considered to be one of the most beautiful coffee houses in the world wow look, look how fancy this looks this place it's all shiny I think there's a second floor as well. Whoa, look at that roof. <laughs> so there's some information about the place here and it says Queen Elizabeth has been here in 1968 and King Albert of Belgium. So yeah, royalty have dined here. You can see why. So I'm gonna get this Date uh, Leche de Limon, lemon tartlet that's 12 ki is 90 and carol's gonna get the cheese pie empada de queijo 1080 and she's also gonna get a strawberry tartlet de leche de morango 1390 carol also got this fresh orange juice for 11 ki is 90 and i just went for the mineral water 770 and here's my lemon tart looks pretty cool how's yours Oh, I like the look of that one. Yeah, it looks better than yours. Is this the fanciest coffee house we've ever eaten at? Probably. It's a bit expensive for Brazil, but that's uh, because you are in a fancy place. Yeah, the royal family is eight yeah. here, that's why. Yeah, even the floor is cool, look at that. here is a very popular local street market so you can get loads of like cheap clothes ten hay eyes for shorts got the flip-flops the chinelos hats got food as well people selling yeah different kinds of food and it goes all the way down here so all around the center if you look up you realize how beautiful the old buildings are they're literally everywhere on the ground floor you can't really tell because you just have the big shutters now they've kind of like opened up the the entire wall but yeah if you look up there looks really nice <laughs> 
colorful as well. Hey Carol, so are, are all these clothes really cheap then? Yeah, they are. Uh -huh. They are? 20 hay eyes for a t-shirt, is that cheap? Yeah, that's a good price. It's like what, four dollars or something? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, this is one hectic market. <laughs> So now we're in the center of the, the big market, found a quiet place finally to speak. So what's the name of this market? It's called Camelodromo or Camelou and as you can see that you can find everything here like from clothes to things to buy for, like for home, everything. You can Pi buy. Pirate video games. Yeah and some, some things that like pretend to be uh, like uh, original from Nike or Adidas or anything but they, they're not original. And I remember when I lived here it would, it would appear on the news that the police would come here. Yeah try and shut it down but so they can't they can't shut it down like a few days later they, they will open up again <laughs> yeah so there's like pathways everywhere all different alleyways literally everything here and we should probably speak about the safety because this is probably the most unsafe part of Rio I think just because it's so busy yeah yeah there are many like uh, cases of uh, pickpockets here so like it happened to me like uh, five years ago I was on the bus with my phone and then somebody from outside stole it and I couldn't do anything oh that so, was here in the center yeah it was here so yeah that's not a safe area we wouldn't say it's safe at all but uh, we have some tactics to try to be more safe like I usually hide my phone inside my blouse or like my, my pants something like that and I I'm always with my purse like this yeah I've actually never been robbed in Brazil even though I lived here for six years as a as, yeah as a gringo right I still never got robbed but yeah it is a part where you gotta pay attention a bit with electronics don't do what I'm doing walk around with a camera all the time I'm obviously making a YouTube video so I'm risking it but yeah, I wouldn't walk around all the time like this. There you go, some bikinis, Carol. <laughs> got the beach towels. We need some of those, actually. Ooh. So Carol couldn't control herself. Yeah, I needed a, a white blouse, so yeah, I'm buying this one, 10, ten hairs. Like, 10 hairs? Yeah, I'm buying it because of the price. Okay. <laughs> we got loads of options here. <laughs> So this building right here is a famous library. We don't usually go to libraries when we travel to places. It's called Real Gabinete Português de Leitura. And that is from the 1880s. And apparently it's based on like a 16th century Gothic Portuguese architecture. So we actually needed a proof of vaccination to enter this place. So that's the first time. Luckily we had a picture of it the certificate on our phone. Look at this entrance here. Whoa. Have you ever been in here? Mm, no. Sure. Looks crazy. It's crazy, yeah. Yeah, I've never seen a 
library like this before. Oh wow, yeah. So this library has 350,000 volumes of Portuguese literature, which is the most outside of Portugal. And apparently there's loads of rare copies, single copies of Portuguese books. So you can see these ones here, I'm not sure what the dates are, but yeah, you can see that they're super old. Yeah, Carol, at first I couldn't imagine why a library would be a so tourist attraction. Yeah, and now we can understand why. Yeah, now we can see why. Beautiful. So some even more interesting buildings to show you. So this isn't really a tourist attraction, but that is the building of Petrobras, which is the national oil company in Brazil. Looks super unusual. So those, those parts that go inside are like a garden. I've actually worked inside there for like three months, not for Petrobras, for another company. And then on this side, you have the Cathedral of Rio, Probably one of the most unusual looking cathedrals I've ever seen. Yeah, it's very different, but uh, I've never been inside. People say it's nice to go inside, but yeah, it's just very different. Yeah, I mean, both of these things look like they're from Star Wars or something. This Petrobras building and that one over there is from the 1960s. They were trying to do like a modern style, but yeah, I've never seen a church like that before. So this part here is also different from when I used to live here. Cars used to pass here. This is part of Avenida Rio Branco, one of the busy streets, but now they've made this like walking area, cycling area, as you can see these guys here. So yeah, it looks way better like this. A lot nicer to walk around. So this right here is probably the most impressive looking building out of all the ones that we've seen in the center. And I think a lot of people consider it to be the, the most beautiful. So that was built in 1905, I think. And how do you say the name in Portuguese? Teatro Municipal. Like an opera house. Yeah, and as you can see here in this area, uh, the buildings look a bit like, uh, like French style. And that's because the mayor at the time, which was called Pereira Passos, he wanted to make Rio look like Paris. It was the Belle Epoque and he wanted to make it look like a, an European city. So that's why it looks like it. Yeah, from what I read, this was actually a design, pretty much copy in the Opera House in Paris. So that's why it looks like that. And I think this uh, main road, Avenida do Rio Branco, was full of buildings that yeah. looked French. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have been destroyed now yeah. for the big modern buildings. Some are still there, as you can see, and some are like museums or others are just like government yeah. places. But yeah, some are, are still up, but the others were just uh, destroyed by the modern buildings. Yeah, so all around this square, there's these really impressive European looking buildings. That one there, like Carol said, we don't even know what they are, but they, they're probably like government buildings. This one here as well, look at that. It's kind of funny because like we said, we used to work here. Not really this area of the, the center, we were way on the other side. So I've never really seen that much of this stuff. I've like passed it by bus and stuff, but never really paid attention. So coming here is like a proper tourist now. Yeah, you pay attention to a lot more of the, the details, the different buildings. And yeah, I just didn't realize there was so many Portuguese style buildings or European style buildings here. Way more than I thought. Yeah, so normally there would be like shows in the opera house there, but because of COVID, yeah, there's nothing going on at the moment. There's a few places around here that are closed because of COVID, just like many cities that we go to. And now we're gonna head all the way to the other side of Avenida Rio Branco. 
and we don't want to walk there because it'll probably take like 30 40 minutes so we're going to get on that tram which i've never been on i think it's called vlt yeah vlt vlt have you been on it yeah oh you have times, yeah. okay yeah i haven't so <laughs> it will be interesting So we just have to buy a ticket first from this little ticket booth. How much is it? Four yeah, it's Oh, that's for their card. So this tram wasn't really worth it if you're only gonna get on it once because you have to buy the card and the card was four hey eyes? Yeah, four hey eyes and uh, the ticket to go to where we want to go is 380 hey eyes but uh, the, the machine is not working properly so yeah. I put four eyes extra to recharge it and then it just took my money, it didn't... Yeah, it ate the, the money, it, yeah. didn't give us any credit no. Then the lady told me to call the call center to make we, a complaint, which is just yeah, we're not we're not gonna do that. Yeah, useless <laughs> and yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, so we came to this other station here that works, and now we got the cards. So yeah, a lot of waste of money, but it's coming. We should have just got an Uber. <laughs> So this area here is going to be our last stop of the day, it's called Porto Maravilha and it's another place that was created just for the Olympics. So this is actually one of the coolest spots now in the center of Rio because you have this museum here, Museu do Amanhã, Museum of Tomorrow. So before the Olympics I remember I came to this spot and it was pretty much like a dump, it was a just like abandoned area, there was like some big highway on a bridge crossing here and there was just nothing here to see so yeah they did an awesome job because now it's a very popular tourist attraction so even on a working day look still quite a lot of people here unusual design isn't it yeah it looks like a, an alien thing or something alien spaceship oh, ro robot thing yeah. <laughs> yeah there's nothing else like that in rio i don't think Look how cool this place looks. The mothership, the alien spaceship. And around you got some better views of Niteroi over there. Popular fishing spot, there's local fishermen all over here. And that's the huge bridge, Ponche do Niteroi. It's actually another island right there. I think that might be like a military thing as well. Not sure.
we got some food from some of the food stalls over there in front of the museum. I got this called tapioca di frango. And yeah, I think it just has like onions, tomato, it has oregano as well, so kind of smells like a pizza, doesn't it? Yeah, I wish I could eat it, but I I bought some pipoca, which popcorn. is popcorn. <laughs> yeah, and so mine was eight reais, and how much was the popcorn? Five reais for the popcorn, five reais. and five reais for the coal. Oh, okay, yeah, pretty good prices. So there's this area right next to the museum that's called the Olympic Boulevard, another area once again that was made during the Olympics. And we've come here to check out the street art because we came here a few years ago and there was some street art. I think the main mural is down there. But I think there are some new pieces there. I don't remember this one here. All along the buildings. I think all these buildings are abandoned. Don't know why, every single one. So this is the main famous mural here. It's by an artist, a street artist called Cobra, Brazilian one. And yeah, it was done just before the Olympics here in Brazil. And at the time it was the biggest in the world. I mean, it goes all the way down there. I'm gonna show you it all. And yeah, it has different uh, people from indigenous tribes around the world. So each person represents, I think, a different continent. You can see there's like an Asian there, African. I think they have a Aborigine from yeah, like Australia at the keep bottom. Walking. Yeah, if you keep it's walking. Very long. <laughs> yeah. And Carol was just saying it's not as vibrant now, right? Because I guess the oh, the weather... The, yeah, the years are passing and the weather, the rain and everything. And so it's, maybe they will paint it again, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of faded. This was like super bright when we came last time. This is another spot that we used to do happy hours and it is a Friday and work's just finished so it's happy hour time right now pretty much. Check it out, super lively. I think we drank here together as well, right? Yeah, this bar, this, this one. Oh, this bar. Yeah, it looks really cool. So we're going to be heading back to Carol's now. It's almost 5.30 and that's when it gets dark in, in this time in the winter. And we got here at 11 so yeah we've been walking around for a long time. Loads of stuff to do, we haven't even covered everything. There's loads of other museums that you can go in, cultural centers, just different parts to go to. So I think you could spend like two or three days to explore all the stuff that the center has to offer. And we're just waiting for the Uber so yeah, Carol just ordered an Uber. They have Uber in Rio. I think a lot of places in Brazil yeah. have Uber. The main cities, yes. Yeah. How much is that? 24 reais for a 30 minute drive. And it's a rush hour, so that's why it's more expensive. Ah, it's okay. still not, not expensive. <laughs> yeah, compared to other countries anyway. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you enjoyed this video as usual. A lot more videos coming from around here from Rio, so stay tuned for those. Subscribe if you like to see more videos like this. Follow us on Instagram for more recent updates. Uh, and we'll see you in the next one.